The footage you are seeing is unedited. The only addition is the voice of Jean-Pierre. According to Huawei, they don't believe that the white man exists. But if they do, that makes me one of the living dead. When I lose my balance, they seem a little reassured. Ghosts don't fall, I guess. At this precise moment, I'm convinced that he's going to let loose his arrow. Maybe he wants to see if it will pass through my body or not. They are both cheerful and frightened at the same time. This one tells the woman to stay back. They look a little more determined this time. I wonder what it means. I feel it's important to show them my peaceful intentions. Michel, my assistant, has kept the remaining porters away from the scene. And Philip, the cameraman, is hiding about 60 feet behind me.
He sees Philip, who must look like a strange creature, with an eye of a camera instead of a human face. Philip has been on previous expeditions with me, and he knows these stone axes have deadly weapons. This one, for some reason, is terrified by my black bag. He tastes the salt that I brought as a gift. Danger. His breathing is short. A sign of fear.
After the sold, I show him matches. He burns his hand, as if he can't believe this is real fire. This feels like a meeting in a time war. Perhaps these two lambi, with their wooden spears and stone axes, are the living ancestors of we, who have learned to fly without wings, talk with the stars, and destroy our own planet. It is not a case of once bitten, twice shy. The bravest warrior wants to know more about the gift of fire sticks from one of the living dead. But he discovers the phosphorus on the matches tastes awful. <laughs> the gift of instant fire seems to convince the Tulambi that Dutilleu, living dead or not, is socially acceptable, or at least is no immediate threat. With what may be one of the oldest gestures of humankind, the right hand, the weapon hand, is offered in greeting. The Tulambi look at Jean-Pierre's pale skin as if it could be paint. But would the living dead be warm, made of flesh and bone and muscle, just as they are? It seems like the Tulambi have never seen a white man and that they're finally prepared to believe their own eyes. The long, soft hair of the Caucasian is clearly another wonder of the world. This debate leads to a final acceptance of Dutilleu, but the women remain suspicious. Now the Tulambi urge Jean-Pierre to join them on the other side of the river. In the next episode of Tribal Journeys, the Tulambi will confront more modern technology and Jean-Pierre Dutilleux will make an unprecedented trip into the Stone Age.